you guys ever heard about a relationship ick? Something that your boyfriend does or your girlfriend does that just rubs you the wrong way. It totally turns you off. Well, in today's video, we're not talking about that because I'm in a happy marriage, but we are talking about some home decor icks. Some interior design, some home decor icks that just rub me the wrong way. They turn me off, I don't wanna see it, and I really don't like them. And I, I'm gonna articulate all the things we've been thinking, but no one wanted to say out loud. So this is gonna be a fun video. Before we get into it, please don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, remember, this is all fun and games. These are my opinions. And all that matters is that you feel happy in your home just as I feel happy in my home. And there are tons of things in here that you guys let me know you don't like all the time. But let's get into today's video. Now, everybody on YouTube is always making videos saying this is how you scale a rug correctly from this room and that room and the other room. And I love it. I love it. I'm not criticizing those people. I love those people. I'm one of those people. But people watch those videos, right? And you finally get the right size rug. So you got rid of the old rug, you took it up, which is a pain. You rolled it up, you found someone to sell it to on Facebook Marketplace. You had to withstand the really sketchy Facebook Marketplace meetup at the Walmart parking lot, right? We went through all of that. And then we get the rug, we get the new appropriately scaled rug, we put it down, and then we don't move the furniture to accommodate the rug. All the furniture is pushed up against the wall and the furniture is not touching the rug. The rug is meant to be the anchor. The rug is meant to be the anchor. The rug is the anchor when it comes to furniture, especially in an open concept. All the furniture is supposed to be touching the rug, if not entirely on top of that rug. So. Please don't just leave the rug floating in space. It's sad, it's lonely, it wants a friend, it needs friends. Put your furniture on the rug. And if you're saying, well, the rug was expensive and I don't want people's grimy feet on it, or I don't want my furniture to mess it up, please, 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 please enjoy your home. It's, it's not that serious. I'm uptight and I'm telling you it's not that serious, so it's not that serious. Just enjoy the things. And if you don't want your furniture to touch the rug because you wanna take care of the rug, don't buy the rug or don't put the rug down. Put the rug up on the wall, frame the rug, uh, do something like that. But just have your furniture touch the rug. It's gonna anchor the space. It's going to make the space finally look finished. And if you put all your furniture on the rug and all your furniture is touching, that means that we didn't actually watch that first video that told us how to scale the rug correctly, which is okay, because we've all been there, but do that repeat the steps and you'll be happy. Something, if there's one thing that I can't stand, that is art that is too small. I'm not talking really about scale. Again, I'm not giving you a lesson about scale. I'm talking about the people, they'll get a painting and the painting is the size of these vinyl gloves. And they're like, oh, look at my painting. And I'm like, I can't see your painting. I can't see your painting because the painting is too damn small. And I don't know what this is, I'm telling you, Kim Kardashian does this. All of the celebrities are doing this. I don't know. I don't know if we're trying to save money, but that must not be the case because those paintings are still so much money. So I, I can't get down with it. Why is the art so small that I cannot see it? Why is the art so small that I need a telescope? I was gonna say a magnifying glass. That's not even good enough. I need the whole Hubble telescope to see a painting across the room. That to me is absolutely ridiculous. All paintings these days are kind of giving Mona Lisa vibes, right? Uh, if you've never seen the Mona Lisa, which I have not, <laughs> I've never been. <laughs> but if you've never seen the Mona Lisa, they always make it seem like it's this really big thing. It's not, it's small. This is not the Louvre. Your house is not the Louvre, right? We wanna actually be able to see the art. We spend all the money, let's make sure that we can see it. Not only do I not like this because I cannot see it, but also, those paintings are almost never scaled correctly to everything else in the room. And you have to end up spending more money because you have to fill up the rest of the wall. And for the people who do not fill up the rest of the wall, I'm coming for you. Please, no, please. No, God! No, God, please, no! That's how I feel. This is one that just gets me angry, is when someone has a pillow and that pillow has no give. And you're like, Kiva, how is this an ick? Why are you thinking about this? It is my job to think about things like this. I don't judge anyone for the type of pillows that they buy. If you wanna buy all down alternative, if you wanna buy all down pillows, if you wanna buy pillows made out of shredded paper, I really couldn't care less. However, However, something that I do not enjoy, something that rubs me the wrong way is a pillow with no give. You sit down on the sofa, you put your head on it, and it feels like you're sitting on a rock. And this happens a lot with down alternative. Now, not all down alternative, and of course, I could give you an entire video on what down alternative is best for you and which one isn't, so you can let me know down in the comments if you want that, because your girl is ready to talk about it. But in general, I hate pillows with no give. They're the pillows that look really nice, and then you sit down on them, and you're just trying to reposition yourself to get comfy, and you really just can't do it. This happens 
happens not only with uh, throw pillows, but also with bed pillows. And if you think you don't know what I'm talking about, tell me the last time you stayed at the Hilton or wherever you like to stay and you're trying to get comfortable and all night long you're tossing and turning. Yes, it's because that pillow has no give. They said, this is the pillow. This is who I am. I'm not going to conform to anything literally. Um, and you get what you get. And I can't stand that. Again, they look great, but I want to be able to actually use the pillows in my home. And honestly, I want to be able to use the pillows in your home. If you've invited me over, I want to be able to lounge appropriately. And you can't do that with a pillow with absolutely no give. This next home decor ick is a direct critique of myself, a direct critique of myself. So don't think that I'm exempt for any of these things because right now I'm staring at a crooked painting. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, the next home decor ache is a chair that does not fit under the dining table. And I'm gonna tell you guys, this is my fault. This is my fault. I, I messaged the store, I chatted. I said, are these chairs gonna fit underneath this dining table? They're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's just say I have trust issues after that because the answer is not, they do not fit under the table. And the reason why I don't like this is not really an aesthetic reason. I don't really care. I mean, I like the chairs and I like the table. So obviously I bought them both, I enjoy them. But when your dining table, when your dining chairs don't fit under your dining table, it takes away so much of your walkway. It takes away so much space that you could use to literally exist in. And I wanna be able to easily maneuver my dining area or my living room or whatever room it is I'm trying to get to. My grandmother's house, Thanksgiving, every Thanksgiving, we're all chilling, whatever. Some of the dining chairs do not fit under the table. Why do I have to walk two miles to, you know, take the long way around the table? That is absolutely ridiculous. If I need to go run and get something out of the oven, I want to be able to run and not have to run two miles. I'm not that fit. I haven't gotten there in my fitness journey. Please. Ah, I just want to have my dining chairs fit underneath my dining table. I shouldn't have to climb under my dining table. I should not have to walk over my dining table. I should just be able to easily maneuver myself on either side of my dining table and not have my dining chairs restrict my movement. I'm, I'm looking at my dining table right now and I'm getting heated, you guys. So this happens to the best of us. All I wanna say is measure. Measure before you buy. Measure the dining table and measure the chairs and don't just trust what someone says on a chat late at night. Um, don't do any late night chatting, I guess is the moral of this story. Now I'm about to tack all of my glam girlies and all of my modern lovers, right? So all the people like me, I'm about to attack you. Another home decor ick that a lot of people share is not burning candles that you buy. I see this happen most often with the Joe Malone candles. Joe Malone, they make, they make wonderful scents. I'm not knocking them. I'm not coming for them. Please don't be mad at me, Joe. Um, that's not what I'm saying, but people will buy these $400 candles, these big old candles, and then they will never burn them. What? What? You're saying I'm not gonna burn them because they were so expensive. It's not, it's not clicking, Steven. I don't understand why you would do that. So I understand that these candles are really, really expensive, but they're not going to give off the scents. They're not going to give off the desired aroma if you do not like them. Some of them will give off a little bit of something, but that's only if your nose is almost touching the wax. And we don't want to do that. That's weird, right? <laughs> so start burning your candles or don't burn candles that are so damn expensive. If you're gonna spend that much money on something, you better use it. So if you're uncomfortable using something that's that expensive, just reel it in. No one says you have to spend $500 on a candle because honey, I spend $25 on candles at Target and I stand in the checkout line like, mm, do I really need this Kiva? This is a pretty penny. So it's really okay to not want to invest in something like that. But use the things that you actually buy. You shouldn't have backup candles, the ones that you actually burn so that this one looks good. If you really want the look of a luxury candle, but without the price, please go to Michaels, go to Walmart, go on Amazon, get a glass vase and print a label with your Cricut. This is a Cricut ad right now. Print a label with your Cricut, please, please just do that instead. Please don't buy things and be afraid to use them. This is not fair. It's just like, don't buy that bottle of wine and always save it to the special occasion that special occasion ever comes. Just enjoy the things life has up. Now, I never thought I'd say this. No, that's honestly probably not true. I, I didn't expect to say this so soon, but another home decor ick is the faux olive tree. I know, I know. I was the spokesperson for the faux olive tree. We had faux olive tree propaganda over here. They got me. There's nothing wrong with the faux olive tree. I love faux plants. I'm not saying, oh, get real ones. That's not me, never gonna say that. I don't really care if it's real or fake because I know I'm gonna kill it. And I don't wanna kill stuff. That doesn't make me happy. So I'm all for faux plants, but the faux olive tree, no matter how much you fluff it, no matter how much you fluff them, no matter how you turn the leaves to not show the underside, the underside of them always looks so fake. They're just like, hey, we finished the top, we finished the front, it's looking great, and on the back, it's just giving construction paper. It's just giving construction paper. And 
that's not a good look. I don't want to have to fluff and turn and like angle myself correctly so that I get the appropriate experience with my faux olive tree. They just never really look as realistic as I really, 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 truly need them to look. Um, so for that reason, I'm just kind of over them and they give me the ick a little bit. Um, but I'm not saying get rid of yours. If you're, if you like it, keep it, right? If you like it, keep it. You guys have been roasting me for my sofa for years. I like it, so I'm going to keep it. So it, it is what it is. But for me, the faux olive tree is over. But the real olive trees, they're here to stay. Now this one is minor, but worth saying. But something that really gives me the ick when it comes to home decor is a sink that does not complement the countertop. So this really only applies to people who are investing in their homes or, you know, um, own the place because please don't replace the sink in your rental. Do not give the landlord your money like that. And this is a problem that I had in my own home for a long time. I had this speckled white counter and I had a white backsplash and they were working together. And then I had this stainless steel sink, right? And there's nothing wrong with stainless steel, but there was no harmony there. We were just kind of like, how did we get here, right? With that color countertop and backsplash, a white sink would have made more sense because it would have been seamless. They wouldn't have been like, oh, look at all those dishes, keep it in do. Uh, look at all that stuff, right? Because it was always drawing attention to the stainless steel sink because it didn't feel continuous. So what I did when we renovated our kitchen is I got a sink that matched the countertop and the backsplash. So my countertop and backsplash are black, white, and gray. Ooh, that's so shocking, isn't it? Like, keep we got black, white, and gray. <laughs> But yes, I got black, white, and gray because I'm basic and I am predictable. But when I was choosing my sink, I wasn't like, oh, let me get stainless steel. I was like, I'm going to get a black granite sink so that you do not notice the sink because I'm not changing the speed at which I do dishes. Um, I do not run the dishwasher every day. We're only two people. We do not generate enough dishes for me to run it every day. And I will not wash a dish by hand. When growing up, we did not have a dishwasher. I wash every dish by hand every single day and I am over it. I'm never doing it again. So. I leave dishes in the sink every single day. And what, what do I do about that? I have a black sink, I can't even see them. So they are truly out of sight, out of mind. And I love that for me and I'd love that for you too. So if you're upgrading a space, please don't choose a sink that just doesn't make sense with everything else you have going on in the kitchen. Choose something that blends. It's just going to be so much easier for you. You guys know I love picture lights. That's never gonna change. It creates ambiance, it highlights a photo, and I am here for it. But something I see happen all the time is that people buy picture lights that are just the wrong size. They'll get an eight inch picture light for a painting that is 40 inches by 60 inches. And I'm just kind of like, I can't see it. It's the same, it's the same thing as a small art. I can't see it. The light cannot highlight the artwork if the light only takes up a fraction of that painting, right? So I understand that picture lights get expensive. I, who decided, who decided that an 18 inch picture light that is hardwired is gonna cost $250? That is highway robbery and I'm mad at you, right? When you're shopping for picture lights from Amazon, a battery operated picture light, it's really hard to find one that's larger than 12 inches. So I feel you, I get you. I know that it can be so difficult to find a picture light that is scaled correctly to your painting, especially if you're only looking at battery operated options, because I know I search through Amazon all of the time. I know the struggle. The struggle is very real when it comes to that, but then just don't use the picture light. Just don't use the picture light. Because when you have something that is way too small, it devalues your art. It actually takes the focus away from the art and you're just looking at the, the messed up scale of that picture light. Now, something you can do, if you can't find a picture light that's the right size, get two picture lights, right? Get two picture lights or use battery operated sconces instead, ones that are a little bit smaller because you can use multiple of those and not, that not look wacky or wonky, whereas using two picture lights might look funny, right? You can skip out on something that is trendy, that is fun if it doesn't make sense for you. And that is kind of where this ick comes from. If you can't scale it correctly, just don't get it. And the final ick of today's video is an ick that I have with every furniture maker ever. So if you, you make furniture, I'm talking to you, unless you don't do this, in which case I'm not talking to you. I cannot stand furniture that is not finished in the back. Why do I only get to experience the furniture from the front, the left, and the right? What about the back? What about the back? What if I wanna float this piece of furniture and it's unfinished? And you guys don't just leave it unfinished. You give me a piece of cork board to put in the back. I just, would the price change that much? Would the price really change that much if you just finished the piece of furniture? I'm telling you, people wanna have options when it comes to furniture layout, furniture arranging. We want to have options and you're taking those options away from us by not finishing the furniture. I will pay 10 more dollars. 
I will pay the extra shipping. Please just finish the pieces of furniture. And of course I can go finish it myself, but what, what if I wasn't DIY with KB? What if I didn't like to DIY? What if I just wanted a finished piece of furniture? Is that too much to ask? And then the worst part is these furniture companies, they won't even tell you, right? They're not giving you that 360 look on the website. They're putting it in a super fine print that you can't even find on the website. So you get it and you're like, oh, I'm going to put this this place. I'm going to float it. It's going to look fantastic. And then you get it home and you're like, oh no, oh no. You're messing with their expectations. Either finish the furniture or don't make the furniture. That's really, truly how I feel. Or if you are a luxury furniture brand, let's just make this the standard. Ikea, you know what? When it comes to Ikea, I know that they are not gonna finish the back of that furniture. They have set a precedent, right? They have managed my expectations and I appreciate that. So I need every other company to take a, a page out of Ikea's book and just let me know, is it gonna be finished or is it not gonna be finished, right? And for all of you who are charging me thousands of dollars for furniture in the first place, you better finish that or else you're scamming me and that's just not cool. Okay, you guys, that is it for today's video those are my home decor icks thank you for letting me vent about the things that i just cannot stand i know some of these things are a little bit quirky but oh i feel like they just ruin a space what are your home decor icks be sure to let me know down in the comments and if your icks are something that i'm doing my own house that's fine too everyone is entitled to their own opinion but the most important thing i want you to take away from today's video is that everyone has their own icks and everyone also has their own things that they enjoy and as long as you're feeling happy in your home that is all that matters if you like today's video please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.